Hi, I'm Jenna, and this is episode 60. Um, let's see. A big hello <laughs> to new viewers and new people in the group, and a big thank you to all of you who keep coming back each and every week, or when you can. <laughs> um, let's see. I'm wearing my vitamin D! I love it! I did get it done in time. I, you know, I had it done last week. And I got it blocked, so I had it, everything done in time to wear it for Easter. So, I was so excited, because I love it. Because there's, like, nothing better than a hand-knit sweater, I swear. It's so soft. I'm loving the Tosh Merino light. Window pane colorway. So, I'm excited. Um, I was, I don't know, I guess I was a little concerned before I blocked it with length. But once I blocked it, and I did not block it aggressively, and I really didn't, I didn't pin it either, I don't think. I can't remember pinning it at all. No, I didn't, I didn't pin it. <laughs> I'm like trying to think, I'm like, no, because I actually needed to move it while it was on my blocking boards, and yeah, it kind of shifted and I kind of had to readjust, so no, I didn't pin it. But, you know, I, I laid it out flat and I smoothed it and tried to, you know, straighten up all the edges, and... It's a little shorter than maybe I would have liked in the front, um, but it is on an angle, but it's long enough in the back. Like, it covers, like, the waistband of my pants, and maybe just a hair longer, which is where I like my sweaters to hit. Like, it below the waistband. Gotta cover that muffin top area. <laughs> Let's be honest here, right? Still got a ways to go in that area. Um... It's not as bad as it used to be, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, so I'm so excited, and I don't know, I, this is the first sweater I've knit that I feel really fits, and fits well. Like, other ones, I don't know, I just haven't been real thrilled about with the fit, but this, I'm like, oh my goodness, I want to wear it all the time. All the time. So, let's see, first off, we have prizes to give away today. So I'm so excited. So um, I went ahead and I closed the Maggie Knit Along. It ended up being like the morning of April 1st, which um, there wasn't anybody who entered anything after midnight. But you could have, because as long as the thread was open, you could um, post an entry. So the first, and this worked out perfect because we had one spinner and one non-spinner. So the prizes for this knit along were generously donated by um, Emily of Fiber Addiction. And she is at fiberaddiction.etsy.com. So the fiber, which is called Never Neverland, which is Falkland. And I think it's 4.2 ounces. Gorgeous blues and greens. A few little splashes of brown. Absolutely beautiful, beautiful, beautiful fiber. And the winner for that was number four, who was Phoenix Fire, who's Tracy, who always seems to have, have good luck at my knit-alongs. Um, but Tracy, I don't hold on to addresses, so please make sure you PM me with a full name and address so I can get this sent out to you. And then the second winner was number 18, and it was Sheep Therapy, who is Pam, who is super sweet. Um... You won a skein of sock yarn. It is 100% superwash merino. It is called Welcome to the Jungle, and you get 410 yards of a fingering weight, which is this beautiful shades of green. I just love this. And it's super soft. You're going to love it, Pam. Um, and then the ongoing knit along, which is our technique for... April and, no, March and April is crochet. So, um, you still have all of this month, and can you believe it's April already? I like, it feels like we just had Christmas and all that, and I'm like, now we're past Easter, and it's April. But, we have two fabulous prizes for that. Um, they were donated by Jeanette from Sun Valley Fiber. See? Her really cute, cute logo of a little sheepy with a horizon. So a huge, huge thank you to Jeanette. And um, the first winner will win Pixie, and the second winner will win Periwinkle. And they are both, oh, 
They are both merino cashmere nylon. So it's 80% merino, 10% cashmere, 10% nylon, and these are so soft. Like, whoever wins these is going to be one lucky duck because, oh my goodness, it's so soft. Ugh. So, very generously donated from Jeanette. Appreciate it. Looking forward to meeting her at the zombie knitpocalypse. She will be my, my, um, roommate. I'm like trying to think, what's that called? A roommate. So, um, then we will have another knit along in May, and May will be a toy knit along, so at the end of April I will open a thread and you will vote. So, for that knit along, just to give you a little heads up to get you excited, because I have great prizes to give away for that as well. Let's see, <laughs> did it roll away? I have too much stuff on my table over here. Anyways, Jeanette had generously donated another skein of yarn. Oh, it's right here. I wasn't reaching over enough. Um, so we're going to give away this um, Sun Valley Fiber. And this is a... Oh, I guess I was thinking this was just merino and nylon. No, this is a merino, cashmere, and nylon. No. My bad. I was right. It was merino. The tag has me confused. Because <laughs> I'm not... I'm not paying attention. Anyway, she has different bases and she highlights the one. So yes. This one is 80% merino, 20% nylon, in the Kermit colorway. I'm like, oh, it's Kermit. And um, then Lois of Knitting's My Bag, because, you know, Lois is fabulous. She is truly one of the most sweetest people I have met. I haven't got to meet her in person, but we've corresponded quite a bit. And I love Lois. And Lois was super awesome. And I will talk more about Lois later, but... She donated one of her small knitting bags, and let me tell you, there is nothing small about this knitting bag. It is big. Big, big. And it has a handle, and there's pockets, and I love Lois's bags. Because they have a nice little drawstring, and you cinch it. I'm not going to cinch it, because I don't want it to get all wrinkly for the winter. But it's in the Lorax. I'm like, oh, it's knitting needs. <laughs> So these will be the prizes for the May Knit Along. So I'll give away the yarn because it came in the door first and then the bag because that's usually how I do it because I think they're about the same price point wise. So I usually give away prizes the order they come in my door. So that'll be exciting. Like I said, I will open a poll. We will vote on which one of my patterns you want to knit next. Um, I have no finished objects. <laughs> Big fat zero. And I'll talk more about why in the slice of life. It's not, it's just what's been going on here lately and I don't want to bore people who don't want to hear about it. But there's no finished objects, but I have some works in progress. I have two <laughs> mostly finished objects. What did they call that on Stockin' at Zombies, a mofo? <laughs> yeah. Um, so I was working on my shawl for the Knitpocalypse Retreat zombie neck apocalypse. And I think last week, last time you saw it, I had just finished the the braid. I don't know. I guess it looks like a braid. I don't know. Maybe I'm doing it wrong. I hate the braid part. Let's just clear that up real quick. I had yarn to knit this um, pattern with um, some, what was it, Malabrigo sock. And I was like, oh yes, that is what I wanted. Well then when the knit-along came and I was, the original pattern I started knitting for the shawl knit-along wasn't working for me. So then I had to find a backup. And I thought, oh, well this will work because it has a highly variegated and a solid and and the shawl's done that way. And the finished objects looked really good. Yeah, I hate the braid part so much that I will probably end up having to find something else to do with that yarn because I have no desire to knit this again. I mean, the pattern's well written. That's not the problem. Great design. I just don't like doing the one part. It's so slow and so tedious, and I hate it. <sighs> but that being said, like I said, I mean, other people might be able to do it, and they don't find it aggravating. It's not hard. It's just you're alternating the yarn a lot, and it just it just drove me bonkers. 
Um, like I said though, the instructions were well written so I've had no problem. I did get through the lace and the only other part that kind of bugs me is there's, after you do the lace, you do like a few rows of stockinette. It looks weird to me. Even in the original pattern, it's a kind of a variegated yarn used in the pattern. I think it's even more colorful necessarily than a tonal. But either way, I don't like how this is all garter and then you do stockinette here. Now if I would have done garter, it would have cinched that up and I was... This is all I have left of the variegated and I might have had enough to do a few extra rows in garter to make it wide enough. But I really didn't want to push it. But I'm not overly crazy about that part. So now, after you have like a bazillion stitches on the thing, you start doing the lace edging. And as you do the lace edging, you're binding off. So you're working it off the needles. This took me forever. I think this was like two hours worth of work, just the lace edging. And it, it just, I'm not even a fraction of the way done. <laughs> so I'd like to be like, oh yes, I will have this done next week. But it's like the same four rows over and over and it's so boring. Like I'm ready to like rip my eyes out sometimes. <laughs> I just, like I said, I know I'm going to like it when it's done. I'm just, it's not a knit that I enjoy. But um, it's getting there. Slowly but surely. I will hopefully have it done in the next week or two. I'm trying to do a few repeats every once in a while, but I'm just, it's not a knit that I enjoy, because I think you repeat like the same four rows 200 and sometimes. I'm like, that's like a thousand stitches on this needle right now, probably. Yeah, because you bind off every row. That right? I don't know. There's a lot. There's just too darn many to count that I care about, and I really want it done. But it stinks when you want it done, and yet you don't want to work on it. <laughs> it really kind of slows the whole thing down. But I did work on it pretty steadily this week, hoping to get it done. I guess I didn't realize until I got to the edging. I was thinking, you know, it was like a knit back and forth edging, and then you just would cast off the whole thing instead of working them off. I can't really say I'd prefer one way or another. I guess it's kind of nice to bind off as you go because then you're not sitting there and binding off for hours. But just doing the same few rows over and over is just, oh, kills you. The only other work in progress, and I was trying so hard to have these done for today. So hard. I got one done. And it is my Time Traveler socks. The And I'm sure I'm sick of working on these. And I'm sure you are all sick of seeing them. But one more week and they'll be done. I promise. <laughs> I will have an FO next week. So the green at the cuff, the heel, and the toe is Knit Picks Stroll in the grass colorway. And then the stripes are Knit Picks Felici and the Time Traveler. Time Traveler colorway, which is inspired by the old, old, old Doctor Who um, scarf that he wore. The really, really long scarf. So, once done, and then I, I tried last night to get it done while I was on a VKN. I tried so hard, and it just wasn't happening. But I did start the other heel. So... I will finish this tonight and have them on sock blockers to show you next week. And then I'm like, oh, I need a break from socks. I just, the enjoyment just isn't there right now. I think it's because I have too many other things I know I need to be knitting on. Because I have so many works in progress, it's not even funny. I want, and, I, and the thing that makes it really hard is that you want to start something new. But then you feel guilty for starting something new because you know you have like many, many bags, <laughs> knitting bags full of half-finished projects. So that takes us into yarny goodness because 
those are the only two things I've worked on all week. And I do have some stuff to show you this week. So, first off, I pre-ordered this. And it is Dancing Dog Dye Works. And the clouds just went by. Hopefully the lighting in here isn't too bad. I didn't turn on the overhead light because, like, when I started it was so sunny. Anyways, it is Dancing Dog Dye Works Waltz Worst in the Turtle Turtle colorway with a lime mini. And it is gorgeous shades of blues and greens and... What I really love about Dancing Dog Dye Works lately is that there's been lots of boy-friendly colorways. So, yay! <laughs> so I had to snatch some of this up because it could be used for a boy. And then the other thing that I got, which I've been trying not to buy yarn, right? Trying. Not very successfully, I guess. Um... But when you order from Jimmy Bean's Wool, in case you don't know this, <laughs> if you've never ordered, you get 5% back. Like, in a, in a store credit. So, um, from October, yeah, October through December, I earned, like, about $10 worth of Jimmy Bean's books. And... You have to use them within the next quarter because they run um, four quarters out of the year. So January through March, April through June, July through September, and then October through December. And then you use them the next quarter. And if you don't use them, you lose them. So since I had a good amount, um, I, I bought this. <laughs> I got six skeins. So... Here's three. You get you get the point, right? I have three more sitting over there. Anyways, it is gorgeous. It is this real... Oh, here comes the sun a little more. It's kind of... I don't know how to... How to describe it. Like, I know, but the word's not coming to me. Anyways, it's kind of not like tonal tonal, but the, the yarn itself, it has a lot of depth because there's different colors. There's like... A really dark brown and a light brown and it's kind of all together anyways it's not a flat brown it's not like just a solid flat brown this brown has so much dimension and it's absolutely gorgeous and um, I ordered the botanical knits book I pre-ordered it I did get the digital copy um I know other people have reviewed the digital copy but I'm waiting for my paperback copy or my it's hardcover my actual physical copy and I'm going to knit the entangled vines with this one which it's brown in the pattern so it's in a brown and it has like the vines going down the sleeve and it's a little cardigan because I love cardigans not a huge fan of pullovers because I think I just get too warm so I ordered enough for that and this is Broco Vintage and it is so soft I really like this yarn so Broco Vintage in the chocolate colorway, or it's color number 5179. So it is 52% acrylic, 40% wool, and 8% nylon. And it is machine washable. Yay! And, you know, I was always worried because sometimes browns don't always show up very well in pictures, it seems. And... This was really pretty in the color in the, on the website, but I'm like, you know, I really kind of wanted a specific brown for this sweater, especially since not all browns look good on me, especially like real reddish browns, but this is like a coppery brown. I think it'll look really nice with my hair. So, I'm excited. I don't know when I'll start it, but I thought, well, you know, I have the bean bucks and there was nothing else I really wanted like I could have gotten just like a single skein of something but I'm like why what's what's the point because then I'll just have another single skein laying around here and trust me I have more single skeins than one needs so then while I was there because I've kind of been wanting this and I've been kind of him hawing about it it is the Noragon, I think that's how you pronounce it. I don't know. I'm bad with names. The Noragon collection, 
um, Volume 5, and it's put out by Broco. And it says it's from the Fall Winter 09-10 collection, so 2009-2010. So, I don't know if this is necessarily something that you can get everywhere. Jimmy Beanswell is really good about having, like, back issues of stuff. Like, they have a really nice selection of back issues of magazines. They must buy so much, which I appreciate, because sometimes you're on Ravelry and you're like, I love that pattern, I want to knit that. And you go and click on it, and it's a magazine that was, like, from three years ago that you probably don't have a very good chance of getting one. <laughs> so, I've been wanting this, and it was kind of pricey. I think I paid, like, $15 for it. And there's really only one pattern I like in it. I bought it for one specific pattern. Like, I think I would have liked this on the cover if the thing hadn't gone up. Like, if it would have just been like a wrap and this would have just been at the bottom. And I'm not one to modify patterns. I'm just, I'm just not. So, I don't know. There's something like this. I just... I don't like the thing around the neck. Not at all. But the one I bought it for, because I love this so much and I love all the finished objects, is this. So it is called Potter. It's knit, it's supposed to be knit out of um, Barocco Pure Merino, which I think has since been discontinued. Um, but I love it in the yellow. I think in a way I kind of want to make it in a green. Like, a really pretty, bright, like, Kelly green. Uh, I love peacoat style things, and I just, I really love this sweater so much. Like, enough that I've shelled out the money just for that pattern. <laughs> uh, let's see. Yeah, there's just really not... This one's okay. This is, like, maybe the only other one. But it's, like, kind of like a waffle stitch type pattern, and I don't know that I would enjoy doing that for the whole sweater. I mean, the little buttons where it kind of opens is cute. This thing, I'm sorry, I don't like the thing in the front. I don't like that at all. I'm like, how can you wear that, like, open, you have to take off, it looks, I don't know, like a bib that's buttoned onto the front. And that's, I mean, there's really not that many patterns in here at all. Let's see. It says in the front how many patterns. There's just, just some things. No, it doesn't. There's just some things in here that, I don't know, I find just kind of weird. But I bought it for the one, and who knows, I might knit it once and be like, mm, that wasn't worth it. Because <laughs> that's happened before. But I love Jimmy Bean's wool so much. You know, I've talked about them probably many times now, and they're in Nevada, and there's an actual physical store. So if you live in the area, you can go to the store and shop. But I, they have amazing customer service, and their shipping is super fast. I can place an order, and from Nevada to Ohio, I get my shipment two days later. It's insane. So if you live closer than that, it almost probably will come, like, next day. And then their shipping is $4 unless if you spend $75. But, like I said, with the Bean Bucks, you get one free shipping coupon every quarter. So every three months, you get a free shipping coupon. So with my yarn, I used my Bean Bucks and my free shipping coupon because you use it all at once. They just apply it. So there's no, no code you have to remember. They keep track of your Bean Bucks. It's so easy. So yeah, so I saved, I used like my $10 in Bean Bucks free shipping. It was fabulous. Loved it. So now, um, tools of the trade. After we have like a little mini book review. <laughs> um, I had mentioned Lois before. And Lois, like I said, super sweet. I adore her so much. I so wish I had the chance to meet her. Um, I contacted her and I was like, hey, I have this fabric. I would really, really love if you could make me some bags. Pretty please. I, like, had everything crossed. And she's like, oh, of course. She's like, you know, I'll put you on the list. Because she does a lot of custom orders, which I appreciate. And I really appreciate the fact she lets me send her fabric. So, um, oh, dropped one. 
So I was like, well, you know, can you just go and whatever's left, can you just make into some bags and for me to use as prizes or whatever, just whatever you can get out of them. She's like, yeah, sure, no problem. Because she's awesome like that. And my first bag, because <laughs> I love this fabric, was the mermaid. <gasps> Look at that. I love it. They're like little retro, they look like little 60s mermaids because they have like the little beehives and the little off the shoulder little things. And I do, I love the mermaids. So I got a sweater bag in that. It's so big. It's huge. I mean, really, it's huge. I love her big bags. And then she also got a medium bag out of it and the the big one she used orange and then the medium one she used pink so I love this as well I'm not sure if I'll keep the medium bag or not but then um I sent her the woodland creatures bag and I wanted a medium for me in this and I love this this one's definitely mine <laughs> and I love the moose I love mooses I love this fabric so much. And then she got two small bags. And like I said, there's nothing small about these bags. She got two small bags out of it. So the bit, the medium was done with red and then an orange and a yellow. Because she's awesome. And then it doesn't stop there because you're going, oh my god, right? And all I sent was two yards of fabric. So then she got a mermaid and then two woodland creatures little accessory pouches. So they're really cute inside, and they're even lined inside. <coughs> oh, excuse me, I'm sorry. So, super cute. Some of these will be used as prizes, and Lois, thank you, thank you, thank you from the bottom of my heart for doing that for me. You're awesome. You're the best. So, yay! I'm so excited. I've been, like, dying to use them, but I'm like, no, I want to show them first. So, I'm like, I got sweater yarn to put in my sweater bag. <laughs> um, I don't have any spinning. Ugh, nothing's gotten done. Same things on, spin on the spindle. Bobbin, bobbin. It's not a spindle. Duh. It's a bobbin. <laughs> Same thing. It's been sitting in here. I haven't even touched it since last week. The poor spinning wheel. I gotta give it a good cleaning because it's probably all dusty and feeling neglected and <laughs> so that's it for the knitting I feel bad there's not more I will have a finished object next week hopefully I'll have something new on the needles as well my shawl designing is going so slow because <laughs> it's like I know what I want it's getting it down on paper and getting the math and everything to fit right so hopefully we'll have a new toy soon this month. Oh, excuse me. I'm telling you, I'm whooped. So now that's it for the knitting. Uh, we're going to move on to into the slice of life. So for those of you who leave me now, because I know there are some of you, um, fully understand, but I miss you. <laughs> and I will see you next week. But for those of you that are hanging on, oh, this week. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Um, Easter went well. <laughs> we had a great Easter. We decorated, or er, um, colored Easter eggs. We had a blast. And it's going to sound, <laughs> it's going to sound ridiculous. Okay, my husband and I, we don't really, we weren't 100% sure how to make good hard-boiled eggs. Because, <laughs> okay, every, so many people, like, we've asked family and friends, like, how, what, what is the best way you found hard boil eggs? And, like, my, one of my friends was like, well, when the eggs float, they're done. And I'm like, okay. So we did them one year like that, and we've, we've done them a few different ways. And the shell always sticks to the egg, and my mom's like, you gotta buy your eggs a couple weeks in advance. She's like, because the fresher the egg, the more the shell will stick. So we did, we bought the eggs I think like a week in advance and then my husband got online and googled like the best way to hard boil an egg. So um, we did it to where you put the eggs in, you bring it to a full boil and then you take it off the heat and you let it sit in the hot water for 12 minutes and then 
Coulomb. So that's what we did and they came out good. So we've been enjoying hard boiled eggs for snacks because we hard boiled a lot of eggs. <laughs> Um, I was really nervous and I was completely prepared this week for a game because uh, my husband and I had gone out to dinner and we went to our favorite little like diner place and it's so hard because it's one location so there's no food nutrition facts whatsoever so I tried to just really like pick things that I knew I would be able to find in the Weight Watchers system like it's nice because the menu will say it's a such and such ounce burger so I could just like put in the thing and then it was time for dessert <laughs> this little diner place has the best pie they're all homemade pies and I got what they call a um, buckeye pie so it's chocolate and peanut butter pie like the buckeye candies because we're in Ohio and everything's buckeyes here and it was so good it was <laughs> it was the best pie and then for Easter um, a couple days later, my mom, like, begged me to make a turtle cheesecake. So, it's a regular cheesecake, not like one of those no-bake things either. I make it from scratch and bake it, and then, right before you serve it, so right before, um, we had dessert, I went and put hot fudge and caramel on it, and then sprinkled pecans, and I put every ingredient in the recipe calculator and everything, and it was, it was 14 slices a piece or 14 points a slice for each. Oh my goodness. And I had one, but I budgeted for it, and I definitely did not eat as much food as I thought I would, but I was prepared for a game. Ooh, I'm sorry. This has been a long couple days. Um, and I didn't. I actually had a loss this week. I lost 0.9 of a pound, so almost a whole pound, and I was floored. So, um... Let's see. So I've been doing, um, with Sock Bunny, I've been tracking my activity. And Sock Bunny, every month, has a poster thing. And I think you have to post it by the 7th of the month. And so this was mine for March. I hit my goal uh, two weeks. Which I'm not worried as much about my weekly goal as my monthly goal. My monthly goal is five pounds. So this month I did that. I actually came out a pound and a... 1.4 pounds ahead. So I got that posted and then for April I'm just kind of continuing my my goal which is ten dollars for every pound towards a new wardrobe um, for my trip in June. So since yesterday was my way in and it was the first Tuesday in April I love to switch the pictures up. So I'm just a hair, no I'm a pound over. Anyway, so this has been a really good motivation. So you have until the 7th of this month to post last month's um, poster and your new poster. So I got that all done. I've already entered into the um, thread for that. And that's been a really good motivator. So even if you're not going to necessarily do it, like with Sock Bunny or something, it's a really good motivator to have a picture of something you're working towards and then what your goal is each week. And if it's not a, like a weight loss goal, you could do like an activity goal. Like you want to exercise so many minutes a week or so many minutes a day or something. So I really enjoyed doing this. This is the third month I participated. So I'm on track, which is good. But I'm so worried because summer's coming and there's so many things we have planned to do and, and occasions to celebrate. My husband's birthday will be coming up and there's Mother's Day and my birthday and our anniversary and then Father's Day and they all usually involve like a special dinner or breakfast or something and I'm kind of worried that that's gonna throw me off. So I keep trying to plan my meals ahead so that helps especially if I know we're gonna go eat we try to plan where we're gonna eat and I can kind of plan um, what I'm going to eat ahead of time. And then these last couple days, I am exhausted today because it's spring break here. And uh, my kids went to their grandma's for a couple days, which is great because, you know, they get to spend time with her. And because during, like, when school's actually going on, we're just so busy. And so um, I had promised my daughter that we, I would paint her room if she could get it cleaned. 
because, you know, when you're at that age where, you know, you still have toys and you still want to hold on to them even though you're not really playing with them. And it's just that tough age of transitioning from being a kid to, you know, a teenager. I mean, she'll be 14 this summer. But it's, it hasn't been easy for her to go through and get rid of things. And I get that. And there's some things we've compromised on that she's gotten to keep that she just can't part with yet. And I get that. But, you know, other things had to go. So the last two days, I have been busting my butt painting the room. <laughs> because I'm like, I have two days to do it. I pretty much have 48 hours to get this room done. And I finished it this morning. Like, I worked on it late, Monday night, all day yesterday, and then all this morning. And it is done. The paint is drying. <laughs> and um, we can kind of get it cleaned up and back together tonight. Um, we had bought new bedding at Target that's super cute with, like, polka dots and it's bright colors. And so I got that all washed because I told her, I said, you can't have... Your new bedding, nothing can be done in the room. You can't have any of your new stuff that we've picked out until your room's ready to be painted. And I get it painted. Kind of hoping it would be motivating because, well, well, she'd be like, well, I got everything else. I don't need it painted right away. And so she's been anxious to get it all put together. So um, I went and, like, I figured, I'm like, well, painting is quite a physical activity. I mean, I'm up and down that ladder all day. My poor arms feel like jelly. <laughs> I'm like, I'm so tired. And, uh, so I put it in the, the Weight Watchers activity calculator, because I'm like, well, surely it has to be worth something. I mean, it's low impact. I'm not breaking a sweat painting, but I definitely can feel it. And, uh, so I put it in, and it considered it a low-impact, you know, thing. And I put in two hours, because I was like, okay, well, the actual hardcore painting that I did yesterday, I did it for two solid hours without taking breaks. And then I go back and touch up and do little things. But, um, so I got eight activity points, so that was good. So I'm pleased with that, because it, it at least counts for activity. Because I haven't had time to work out at all yesterday. I won't have time to work out today. Because it's going to be moving, and furniture, her room is so small, and we had to move all the furniture to the center, then we move it one way, and then we move it to the other wall. <laughs> it's been crazy. So, um, uh, and then I was really working really hard to get to 90 days of exercising every single day. And I was so close. I got through Friday... Well, I had done the Jillian Michaels backside workout, and I pinched my sciatic nerve. Like, my leg had been aching for a few days, and I have had my sciatic nerve pinched before to the point where I couldn't walk. Like, I could lay or I could stand, but any, like, sitting position, I would be in too much pain. So I, like, felt it coming on. Well, I woke up Saturday morning, which would have been day 89, and I couldn't move. I was in bed all day Saturday. I could do nothing. I just laid in bed and read a book because I was in so much pain. So, um, you know, I would ice it and, and then get the hot water bottle and kind of switch it and kind of just babied it all day. No exercise. But then I got up on Easter, day 90, and I, I could move a little more. And I did a very low impact. Just exercise, it kind of stretched my legs and did a little bit of aerobic. And so out of 90 days, I exercised 89. But let me tell you, that day of rest, it felt so good. It felt so good just to lay in bed and read a book. And the thing that stunk the worst, though, is it was like 60-some degrees before it, of course, got cold again. And I didn't get to enjoy it. So... I guess, you know, there are going to be days when I can't exercise because life just gets in the way. But I was proud of myself for doing it and proud to, that I had committed so much because I hadn't exercised 90 days in probably, like, the last 10 years. <laughs> no, not that much. Um, Because I did do curves after my boys were born. And it, curves worked. I liked curves. Um, I lost weight doing curves. Unfortunately, we moved, and now we're not close to a curves, and it's just too much of a drive for to only be able to go for a half hour, and then their hours aren't convenient. 
they're not open really they're open more early and then they're only open early early in the morning Saturday and not at all Sunday so it didn't work for my schedule I wish it still did like if I still had a curves like less than five minutes away and and they had hours that it would be convenient for me I would so be doing curves again because that worked for me once but like I said it's just not it is not an option really now so that is it for me this week like I said hopefully I'll have some finished objects to show you I didn't try any new workouts or anything this week um, I'm just trying to rotate things because I don't like to be bored. When I get bored with a routine is when I'll stop doing it. So for me, lots of variety is the good thing. Trying to go with whatever mood I'm in. Not really eating anything special this week. Like I said, with the holiday, it was just crazy. But I made it through it. Like I kind of felt confident. Like, okay, I made it through Easter. You know, I really kind of planned. I didn't bring anything I couldn't eat, which was really important to me. So, I'm like, yay, small victories, right? It's what it's all about. So, I am Jenna, also known as Retro Lemon, on Ravelry, Plurk, Pinterest, Twitter, Weight Watchers. <laughs> um, I think that's all I usually mention. <laughs> so, until next week, I will see you then. Bye.